this morning, Brother Nathan Graber McCray. He was a pastor at North Goshen Mennonite. Now he is professor. Did you study to be a professor or a teacher? Study to be a pastor. And now, you, well, I guess, did you study both? Well, pastors are teachers. Well, yeah, it has a lot to do with it. So this morning, he will bless us by sharing the word. Tell him to choose his verses and to share what God put in his mind. He is married. His wife's name is Ellen. He has two children, Sammy, who's eight years old, and Dina, who's four. Let's bless him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Nathan, his ministry, for what he's now doing, teaching children and youth. I bless his family, bless his children. Lord, this morning I bring him, put him before you, and that you may give him your peace. And that along with that peace, you would give him the word for each one of us. Bless them, Lord, that those words may not only reach our minds, but also our hearts. In the name of Jesus, I say this. Amen. Good morning. It's good for us to be here this morning to worship our God and to praise the name of Jesus. It is good. For us to be here together to sh share our energy, our time, and our faith in a community whose boundaries are not territorial. Truthfully, the pastor has told me that you represent about a dozen of countries here since you've gotten here. This community is where authority does not come from power of or violence, but it is given by the Holy Spirit to all who hear God's voice. Did you hear it? Do you hear the voice of one who cries out in the wilderness? Do you hear a sound like many waters, like a great trumpet? Did you hear a still, small voice inside of you? calling your name no matter how it sounded to you all of us have been called by our own name to follow Jesus and we are answering as best as we can today I answer today I answer that call by coming to this place to worship with you and to share my words with you it is an interest. It is a, a time or a moment. It is an interesting moment to start about talking about new beginnings, which is today's theme. New beginnings. <clears throat> I myself started a new job a couple of months ago, which has been a wonderful new beginning for me. I am a teacher at Basher Alternative School, and I help the teens or the children that can function well in regular schools. And I feel like that's where I'm, God put me there is where I'm supposed to be. My son, Sammy, is very, a very picky eater. It's like potato, doesn't like chicken. And recently he discovered the miracle that it is, what is a cheeseburger? So it is a, uh, kind of a new beginning for him. It is an interesting time to talk about a new beginning. Also because of the upcoming elections. One way or another, this country will have a new president next January. And we don't know who will it be. It looks like this kind of dominates everyone's, takes over anyone's thoughts because there's a lot of Ironically, you know, because the stakes are so high for the people we love. Ironically, the stakes may be high, even the highest for those who cannot vote. Our neighbors 
whom we treat like foreigners without the right to contribute to this democracy by their ballot. I know who I'm voting for, but I'm not happy about it. How can we be happy about it when both parties serve the interests of the rich and powerful and not the poor and oppressed? When both parties are comfortable with violence here or overseers or overseas comfortable with cheapening the lives and the dignity of being created in the image of God. When both parties try to turn to turn us against our neighbors, against immigrants, against each other, even though our real enemies are greed, poverty, and hate. I have the feeling that our nation is on the cusp of a new beginning. A new stage in our history, and I'm worried. I'm worried because people are people are saying that God is on their side. People are voting in the name of Jesus for a character who's not following Jesus. One who doesn't follow Jesus, who acts like the opposite of Jesus. People are spewing out hateful words and calling Christian. People are also threatening with violence and calling it liberty. Of course, a new beginning is coming. But it might be the beginning of something ugly and mean. An era of cruelty and injustice. Or it might just be the same old cruelty and injustice that we already have. In the form of wars and prisons and police violence. In the form of poverty for some while others live in luxury. Unfortunately, Jesus never guaranteed us lives that would be free from injustice or a world that would be free from violence and hate. But my brothers and sisters, I have something to tell you. Jesus did give us some pretty good guarantees. And they are good. I'm going to read today's scripture. Judas said to him, to him, and I'm wearing the, reading the King James Version. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine but the fathers which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being you present with you. But the Comforter, will, who which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Peace I leave, I leave with you. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In that in this scripture, there's difference, there's reasons to wait and not to be in despair. There's moments to be happy, not to be happy, and not and not give up. The first guarantee that Jesus gives us is that we know the difference who truly those who truly love Jesus and those who don't. Jesus said that those who hear his commandments and obey them are the ones who love Jesus. I don't think he means we have to be perfect all the time. I think he means that when someone claims to be a Christian but out of their mouth comes out hate and fear 
We know that they don't love Jesus. When someone threatens violence in Jesus' name, we know that to be a blasphemy, not righteousness. When someone says they love Jesus, but they don't love immigrants or gays, and they don't care about the poor and the oppressed, we can see right through the nonsense. And if we need a reminder of who we are as followers of Christ, Jesus offers us another guarantee. Jesus guarantees that God has sent us the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that moves amongst us to show us the way of love in Christ. We feel that the Spirit, when we show kindness, or when we receive kindness and generosity in Jesus' name. We feel that same spirit when we accept all God's children and when we are accepted by others. We feel that this, the advocate always calls us to go back and to love Jesus. And it's not always what's the right thing to do, but because it's actually good for us. That's why Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fruit is delicious, and it's good for you. And it's good for everyone. Have you seen how Mexican people like to sprinkle lime juice on everything? Life is the same way. It tastes much better in the presence of those fruits. Look at those who are out there stirring up hate. Do they look happy? Do they look healthy? Do they look like, like they enjoy a life of happiness in Christ? I don't think so. The truth is that God didn't choose, choose love, kindness, and those other fruits just by random chance. God made limes and mangoes and watermelons because God loves us and wants us to th strive or thrive in this world. God wanted us to rejoice in the deliciousness of God's creation. Not to exist blandly from day to day. In the same way, God wants our lives and communities to be filled with joy and peace. So God sent us Jesus to show us how to live in a way, a way that is healthy for us and makes us happy. The advocate reminds us that each time we come together to love one another, to be kind and to praise our Lord as one. Jesus offers us yet another guarantee in this passage extraterrestrial peace and I called it like this extraterrestrial peace not because it's coming from a, another galaxy like Star Wars or something like this not because it's coming from outer space again but because Jesus describes this peace as the one that he leaves us as being a distinct from that of this world offers us at the best the world offers us peace as the absence of violence if we're lucky and if we don't break its rules for now worldly peace is at its best like temporarily restraint of the powerful a peace that can always be taken away a worldly peace is that maintains their worldly power. Worldly peace is purchased by our labor. If we use our minds and bodies to work for the benefit of the rich and their corporations, they agree to give us enough money to fend off the violence of poverty and hunger. For now, if we do what they say, if we don't question their power, 
worldly peace is not peace, but a prison. For privileged people like me, a comfortable prison. For others, a cruel prison. But the peace of this world is only the ability to avoid starvation or violence by participation or participating in the system that maintains the power of those who already have the power. That's not the type of peace that Christ offers to us. Christ offers us peace in our hearts. And Christ offers us peace peace in our hearts and minds a mind freedom free from anxiety and troubled thoughts Christ does not offer peace as the world does as a reward for protecting his power and privilege Christ is already Lord Christ doesn't need our labor or our submission to maintain his power the world and our lives are already in this hands. Christ's peace is a free gift of love, not a transaction. This extraterrestrial peace cannot be bought, nor sold, nor coursed. The peace of Christ is the joy and confidence we have when we form communities of love and kindness, of gentleness and, and patience. When we fill our lives with the fruits of the Spirit, when we love one another as Christ has loved us, the world does not understand that, my brothers and sisters. The world thinks Jesus is a picture on a wall or a magical ticket to heaven. The world thinks peace is feeling safe from hurt, saved from an, an, from an afterlife in hell. Those in this world who claim to be Christians but stir up hate and violence, they may think that they can do what they want because they said a special prayer and, want, and won't go to hell. But that is missing the whole point. Jesus' commandments are not dismissible. Jesus came to teach us how to escape from the torture that is to live a celestial life without love, without kindness, without justice. A life that is not enriched of a life not enriched by the fruit of spirits. Jesus said the words we read today to his disciples just before he returned to his Father in heaven. He was preparing them not for the afterlife, but for life. He was calling them, he has called them and us to start building a kingdom of God here on earth as a community living out as a community following Jesus commandments with you know in love Jesus's peace is not like this one in the world it's the the extraterrestrial peace the extraterrestrial peace produces an extraterrestrial kingdom a kingdom that is not drawn with borders on a map not tied to a place or nationality God's kingdom is built by our love for Jesus and one another and everyone is welcome and accepted in God's kingdom our labor and energy serve the Lord as we serve one another and our neighbors in God's kingdom we don't have to worry about elections because we acknowledge that Jesus is already Lord in God's kingdom we don't seek power. We seek to serve and to follow Christ. This kingdom already exists here and now. Even as we build it and it
and it does and God's kingdom does not require some sort of a passport entry thank you Jesus for giving us your peace thank you God for sending us the spirit thank you Lord for the community of faith and for the delicious of fruit it bears amen